Hello there. I'm your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we are going to do some homework. We're going to graph logarithmic functions and we're going to use transformations to do it. So I'm going to share my screen. And here we are. So let's do it. Here's our first problem. For the following function, briefly describe how the graph can be obtained from the graph of a basic logarithmic function. Then graph the function and state the domain and the vertical asymptote. Yes, logarithms have a vertical asymptote, just like exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. And you have to remember that. Okay, we're looking at f of x equals log base three of x minus one. X minus one is the argument of the function. So any numbers in there with the X are going to control horizontal shifts and shrinks and uh, everything horizontal. Whereas numbers on the outside are going to have an effect on a vertical movement. OK, now describe how the graph of f of x can be obtained from the graph of the basic logarithmic function. Now that's going to be. Um, ah, OK, the graph of f of x equals log base three of x minus one can be obtained by translating shifting the graph of y equals log base three of x one unit right there, one unit to the right. You'd expect it to be to the left, but when we're dealing with horizontal movement, it's like everything is backwards from vertical movement. Okay, let's check our answer. Yes, we're right. Now we have to graph. Let's click and enlarge the graph. Now we're going to choose the icon for a logarithmic function right here. Click anywhere. This is the graph of the basic logarithmic function. We're going to be playing with it by changing it. Now there is a horizontal shift and that's the only kind of transformation we're dealing with. A horizontal shift of one to the right. So that's going to be positive one. And that's it. Look at our base, it's already three. So let's save and check our answer. Bravo for us. Aha, but we're not done, are we? We have to say what the domain is. Well, look at that. The domain would have been OK, the domain. Of the basic function. F of X. Equals log base three. Of X. What that would be would be the domain would be. zero with a parenthesis to infinity. Because the y axis, which is x equals zero, the line, the vertical line x equals zero, is the y axis. Is the vertical asymptote. We 
which means that X can get really, 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 really close to the Y axis, but it can never touch. Now, remember, this is not that basic function. This is f of x equals log base 3 of x shifted 1 to the right. So that asymptote has just been shifted 1, one unit, to the right, which means that its domain is going to be 1, but not equaling 1, near 1, to infinity. And that's what I'm about to type. Parenthesis. Bah. Parenthesis 1 comma infinity and then close parenthesis parentheses well no there let's check our answer brilliant now the vertical asymptote would be the line Let's go back here. If we were working with this basic function, the vertical asymptote, the VA, would be the line X equals zero, which is the Y axis. But it's not. We're dealing with this function right here. So the VA, the vertical asymptote, is going to be one unit to the right x equals 1. That's what I'm going to type. They've already got the x equals here. So I'm just going to type 1 and then check my answer. Yay. Yay me. Let's go to the next question. Wow. Okay, for the following function, briefly describe how the graph can be obtained from the graph of a basic logarithmic function. Then graph the function, give the domain and the vertical asymptote of the function. Okay, so here's what we're dealing with now. And I really need to put these numbers beside it so I can find them again. Okay, the basic function is going to be y equals log base 3 of x. But we're playing around with it. Instead, what we've got is y equals log base 3 of x. And then there's a plus one out here to the right. Well, that plus one is a vertical shift up. Vertical shift, vert shift. Of positive one. So let's answer these questions. Select the correct choice below and fill in the answer box to complete your choice. Shift the graph of y equals up. Up, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So y equals log. Now, watch what I have to do with the base, base 3. I have to go to this subscript and click right here. And then I'll put a three. Now you can't see me do this, but I'm going to hit the right arrow key on my keyboard. 
And since they're putting parentheses, I guess I will put parentheses. Parentheses X, parentheses closed. Shift the graph of the basic function log base three of X up one unit. And then I'll check my answer. Good job, Barbara. All right, now I'm going to graph. Again, we only have one transformation to worry about. This is the graph of the basic logarithmic function. So I click there and I click anywhere. Now this is the basic logarithmic function. Notice this, the basic function goes up, 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 up the y-axis, never getting near the y-axis. But actually it starts out more close down here and it's slowly moving away. So that this isn't really a vertical line, even though it looks it. All right, this basic logarithmic function is going to cross the x-axis at x equals one and then rise slowly, slowly, slowly until it gets way out here to positive infinity. Now, remember we have a transformation though, so it's not going to end up looking like that. We're going to move one unit up. That's a vertical shift right here. So the vertical shift is going to be positive one. Positive in this case, means up. Now they already have the base three filled in for us, so let's save and check the answer. Okay. Now what's the domain? Well, look at it. It really hasn't changed that much. The only change is that it doesn't cross the x-axis anymore at x equals one. All right, so the domain is still going to be really, really infinitely close to zero all the way out here to the right to positive infinity. And that's what I'm going to type. Parenthesis. No. Parenthesis. There. Zero. infinity and then parenthesis. Check my answer. Ah, good job. All right, finally, what is the vertical asymptote? It's still the line x equals zero because we had no horizontal shift. Check answer. Alrighty. Next question. And now remember, you can always back up and watch this again. That's the great thing about uh, videos. You can back up. You can make it go slower. You can make it go faster. You can change it around to where you need it to be. Okay. Now, uh, this is 9.4.87, which means it's in section 9.4, number 87. And what we have here is f of x equals 11 times the natural logarithm of x. Okay, walk down memory lane for a minute. It's not much of a memory. You would have just studied it. Um, the uh, inverse of f of x, f of x equals 10 to the x.
is f prime of x equals log x, where the tin base is understood. Now the inverse, let me move over to the left a little bit. The inverse of f of x equals e to the x, e is a number that's about 2.7, is f prime of x, or g of x, or h of x, whatever you want to call it, equals the ln, the natural logarithm of x. So what we're dealing with now are natural logarithms, but it's still just a logarithm. So here's what we're dealing with. Eleven times the ln of x. Now, what is the basic function? They're calling everything f of x here. So I'm just going to go along with it. Basic function f of x equals the ln of x, which is going to look amazingly like log base 3 of x, as you'll see. So what's happening to it? The new function The new function is 11 times the ln of x. Now you have a number here that's greater than 1. 11 is greater than 1, right? Usually. I'm being sarcastic. 11 is definitely greater than 1, which means it's the uh, vertical stretch. So we're going to have a vertical stretch. And that is the only transformation we're going to be dealing with. All right, now, graph f of x equals 11 times the ln of x is a vertical stretch, vertical stretching of the graph of f of x equals ln x. Check answer. Yes, that's true. Now we're going to graph. Ln, ln, the natural logarithm, is just a logarithm. So I'm going to click on the icon representing logarithm. And anywhere over here, see it doesn't matter. This is what the basic logarithm function looks like. Now we're going to enter into this box our one um, a transformation, which is a vertical stretch, which is right here. And we need to go to positive 11. There it is. See, you just watch the number up there. Okay. Now there aren't any more. And yes, the base is E. So let's save and check answer. Now, how do I know the base is E? Before we go on, let's look at this. F of X equals the ln of X is just another way of writing F of X equals log base E of X.
There you go. I think I read that Briggs was responsible for creating creating the idea of the natural logarithm, rewriting it like that. I don't know if that's true. I need to reread my history. Okay, so back here, here we are. Now this is not a vertical line. I wish the graph were bigger. Um, what this does is it keeps moving up, 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 and then curves over to the right and goes to positive infinity. So the domain is going to be from zero to infinity. Sounds like the title of a book. And let's check the answer. Now, when we're talking about domain, we're talking about the x-axis, horizontal. So, like I said, this goes up, 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 and over to the right. That's where the positive um, infinity comes from in the domain. All right, now, the vertical asymptote is, there was no horizontal shift at all. So, the horizontal asymptote is still going to be x equals zero. Bravo for us. OK, now we're getting something more interesting. We've got two to go and our lazy days are over with. Let me save this document. And this is 9.4.89. All right, well, ooh, that's not pretty. Ah, almost wrote LN. All right, f of x equals 12 minus the LN of x, the natural logarithm of x. Well, clearly the basic graph, basic function rather, is going to be f of x. Again, they really shouldn't be using the same f of x, but they are, so I'm going to let it go. Equals the ln of x. That is going to be the basic function. But there are transformations going on that it's going to be difficult to see if we don't write this in the following way. Negative ln of x plus 12. Now I can read this like a book. This is the basic function ln of x flipped over the x-axis, what we call a reflection, a reflection across the x axis. Oops, that should be an I. And then moved up 12 units. So this is the vertical shift right here. Okay, now that I know what the transformations are, I can graph this. Uh, but first, I better answer these questions. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Graph f of x equals 12 minus the ln of x is a transformation of the graph of f of x equals ln x, the transformation of the graph by a reflection across the x-axis, and then a translation 12 units up, or up 12 units. 
perfect. Now we graph it. I click here for the logarithm function. I click anywhere here. I get my basic logarithm function right there. That's what it looks like. And I am going to record the two transformations, a reflection across the x-axis, and, a, oh my, a vertical shift up 12 units. Vertical shift up 12. No. There. All right, and the base is E. So let's save and let's check. Brilliant. Should say brilliant, not good job, brilliant job. Okay, that makes the domain. We're still looking in the left right direction and the Y axis really, really close to it, but not touching it is as far left as this graph goes. And then it goes to the right forever and ever and ever. So the domain is going to be parenthesis zero comma infinity and parenthesis again. Cool beans. Okay, so a vertical, the vertical asymptote is x equals zero, which is the equation of the y-axis. Check answer. Yes. One more. Can we live that long? Oh no, we can't possibly survive this, but we're going to try. Okay, 9.4.91, f of x equals one-fourth times the log, and it's log base 10, but we don't write the 10, log base 10 of x minus 2 minus 3. Okay, let's look at this from left to right. Actually, you always start in the parentheses, right? Order of operations. So first, actually, the basic graph log x, which is really log base 10 but we don't write the 10. I don't know if my math lab would count that right or wrong. Where's my eraser? Here it is. So this is our basic graph. Now, the first thing that happens is the graph is shifted to the right, not what you'd expect, two units. Oops. Then it's vertically shrunk. What a word. By a factor of one fourth. Now you may be wondering how <clears throat> excuse me, how I know the order, and I'll tell you in a minute by reminding you of something you've known since pre-algebra or before, since arithmetic. And then finally this. It's been uh, vertically shifted
down three units. How we know the order of the movement is the order of operations. Please excuse my dear, I like to do it this way, Aunt Sally. You start out working in parentheses. I'm going to cut it short and call it parens. Then you work with the exponents if there are any. Then you've got multiplication and division. And last, you do addition and subtraction. OK, that's how I know what order to go in. All right, here we go. Describe how the graph of f of x can be obtained from the graph of the basic logarithm function, y equals log x, and we're going to shift the graph of y equals log x. Two units to the right. Shrink it vertically and then shift it down three units. Check answer. Well done. Now, how did I know that this was a shrink and not a stretch? And the answer is when this number is less than one. In other words, when it's a fraction. Um, you're going to be shrinking the basic function. Let me write basic by here. Okay, and save it. Okay, now let us click here, click the logarithm icon, click on the screen, get the basic logarithm graph, and then now we're going to be putting in three transformations. So starting here at the top, vertical shift, shrink. There's a vertical shrink. I should have put a V shrink there. Oops, oops, what have I done? What have I done? Cancel. Let's do it again. Oh, dear. OK, now. There is a vertical shrink. Of one fourth unit. Point twenty five is one fourth. There is not a horizontal shrinker stretch. There's a vertical shift down three units, so negative three. Ah, there. And there is, let's see, what have we already done? We've done the shrink, we've done the shift, and now what's left? Doggone it, where did it go? All right, this is the last one. I am going to save this. And then just, just kind of move it way over here so it'll get out of the way. I'm going to have to cancel again. 
How annoying. All right, here, here, shrink. Point twenty five. Vertical shift, negative three. Horizontal shift. Did I even include that? Yes, I, I did. But I should have put H shift. I did it again, didn't I? I did it again. I can't stand this. All right. Now is when I make mistakes when I get irritated. Again, vertical stretch or shrink. It's a shrink of 0.25. Vertical shift down three. A horizontal shift of positive two. And the base is 10, because we don't see the base, we know it's 10. And I'm going to save and catch my breath and check answer. Well done. Ah, finally. Okay. That's the end of this video. Talk to you later. Right, have to stop sharing, stop recording, stop recording.